Hello and welcome to the ISTQB Advanced Level Technical Test Analyst Training and Certification Program. Single solution for your preparation. This accredited course is going to teach you each and everything you need to know to become a successful ISTQB certified professional. While other courses only cover the theoretical concepts, our course not only covers these theoretical concepts, but also covers real-time examples. In addition, we make sure you remember the topics by providing revisions, quizzes, and different exercises. The highlight of this course is that it contains topic-wise explanation, topic-wise quizzes, chapter-wise quizzes, two sample question papers, solved practical questions, which you will not find anywhere. In total, you will get more than 200 questions, which is enough to clear the real ISTQB exam. Our courses are not developed by just one person, but a special team of highly qualified professionals and experienced educators who are working in the leading industries. This includes subject matter experts to help you with technical topics, trained voiceover artists to make sure you get a great audio learning experience, and an experienced graphic designer to enhance the visualization. We have a wide experience in teaching online and we have more than 30 popular courses listed in online platform for different certifications. It is our genuine pleasure to use all our experience and expertise to train you and help you obtain an official ISTQB certification. As of now, we are teaching in 143 countries with more than 1 lakh students and still growing. Now it's your turn to join our growing family and become part of it. In return, you will get advice from industry experts who will help you throughout the course. Join ISTQB Advanced Level Technical Test Analyst Training by enrolling now and become part of us. There is no need to worry. This course is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Let's get you ISTQB certified. Welcome to ISTQB technical test analyst certification course to prepare properly and effectively it's important that we know how many marks are coming from each chapter that is what we will cover in this lecture in istqb technical test analyst you will get a total number of 45 questions chapter 1 is technical test analysts tasks in risk-based testing. Here, you will be asked two questions. Chapter two is white box testing. From this chapter, you will be asked eight questions. Chapter three is analytical techniques. From this chapter, you will get seven questions to answer. Chapter 4 is Test Techniques. This is the most important chapter. From this chapter, you will get 13 questions. The marks obtained from these chapters will be the deciding factor. Chapter 5 is Reviews. And from this chapter, you will be asked 5 questions. And finally, in Chapter 6, Test Tools and Automation, you will get 10 questions. The marks distribution on this graph gives you a good idea of which chapter requires more of your focus. Keep this graph in mind while preparing for the exam. Before we start with the lecture, you must know the knowledge levels used for the syllabus. These knowledge levels mean the same for all the ISTQB certification course, and they are categorized as K1, K2, K3. Let's see what each of them mean. K1 is level 1, which means remember. Here the candidate will recognize, remember, and recall a term or concept. K2 is level 2, which means understand. Here, 
The candidate can select the reasons or explanations for statements related to the topic and can summarize, differentiate, classify, and give examples for facts, testing concepts, and test procedures. K3 is level 3, which means analyze. Here, the candidate can select the correct application of a concept or technique and apply it to a given context. K3 is normally applicable to procedural knowledge. So, in simple terms, just remember, K1 means you need to remember the points and the question will be direct. K2 means the question will be based on comparison so that you have to understand the topic. K3 means application-based questions. Over here, you have to understand the concept and then apply it to the asked question. You need lots of practice to answer such questions. Let's answer a million dollar question how to clear the ISTQB exam in the first attempt. Let me tell you this straightforwardly. ISTQB advanced level exam is difficult. You have to understand the concept, without which you cannot clear the ISTQB advanced level exam. This is the success rate graph from the ISTQB official website. And as you can see, only 58% of the people could clear the ISTQB Advanced Level Technical Test Analyst Exam in their first attempt. So, you must know what approach you should follow to clear the exam. I suggest this approach based on our experience. Step 1. Watch the video lecture. Step 2. Read the corresponding topic in the ISTQB official PDF. Step 3. Solve the quiz so you understand the types of questions asked previously. Step 4. If the topic is of type K3, please understand the concept, since the number of questions are limited, so please understand the provided question. Step 5. Solve all the questions provided in the course. It will give you a fair idea of what you will get in the exam. Follow these five steps and for sure you will clear the exam. And yes, for any doubt, reach us directly. Our experts will help you throughout your preparation. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut around it. But once you complete this course, I am sure you will gain more knowledge and it will help you for the ISTQB exam. So, all the best for the ISTQB exam. Uh, let's see how many questions we will get in the exam. The total number of questions are 45. Total duration provided to clear the exam is 120 minutes. The question could be of 1, 2, or 3 marks. Total marks are of 76. Passing mark is 49, which is 65%. There are no negative marks for the wrong answers, so answer all the questions. For Advanced Technical Test Analyst exam, you will get two question papers. The first question paper will contain questions similar to the foundation level exam. Each question will give to one mark. The second paper will contain analysis-based or scenario-based questions. You have to analyze and understand the questions. Question may carry one mark, two marks, or three marks. Most of the questions will be new and you have to solve them there only. Therefore, it's important that you understand the concept.
Welcome to Chapter 1. The Technical Test Analyst's Tasks in Risk-Based Testing. At the end of this chapter, you must know these keywords. Product Risk Risk Assessment Risk Identification Risk Mitigation Risk-Based Testing Whenever you come across these terms, pay more attention towards it. Along with the keywords, we have two learning objectives. But right now, we will not go through all of these objectives, but we will address them all in the upcoming lectures. And in the starting of each lecture, I will inform you about its related learning objective. From this chapter, you will get two marks. Let's start with the chapter. In this lecture, we will cover the introduction of technical test analyst tasks in risk-based testing. Let's first understand the task of test manager, technical test analyst, and test analyst. The task of the test manager is to establish and manage a risk-based test strategy. The technical test analyst identifies the technical product risk inherent in the project. For example, risks related to security, system reliability, and performance. Whereas, the test analyst identifies business domain risks inherent in the project. For example, risks related to safety, business, and economic concerns and political factors. They both identify risks to ensure the risk-based approach is implemented, but they do it differently. In this syllabus, our focus will be on tasks of technical test analysts. The three main tasks of the technical test analyst are risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation. These tasks are done iteratively throughout the product development to deal with emerging product risks, changing priorities, and to regularly evaluate and communicate risk status to the stakeholders. Let's summarize the important points. The task of test manager is to establish and manage a risk-based test strategy. The technical test analyst identifies the technical product risk inherent in the project. A test analyst identifies business domain risks inherent in the project. The three main tasks of the technical test analysts are risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation. In this lecture, we will cover risk identification. The learning objective here is to summarize the generic risk factors that the technical test analyst typically needs to consider, which is marked as K2. In the previous lecture, we saw the three main tasks of the technical test analyst, which are risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation. Now we will cover the first task in this lecture. Risk identification is defined as the process of finding, recognizing, and describing risks. The risk identification process is most likely to detect the largest possible number of significant risks. The next question is why we want to identify risk. We want to identify risks so we can call them out, review them, prioritize them, and determine what to do with them. The next question is, 
How do we identify risks? To identify the risks effectively, we can include a broad set of stakeholders and apply different approaches. Different stakeholders include technical test analyst itself, technical support team, domain experts. And different approaches could be independent assessments, workshops and brainstorming sessions, risk templates, use of checklist. Let's see each of these points one by one. First, we will see how different stakeholders help in the risk identification process. Let's see how technical test analysts contribute to risk identification. The test analyst brings out knowledge of the software, the domain, the customer, and other projects to help identify as many risks as possible. The next stakeholder is technical support team. Technical support people will perceive different risks than developers and operations people will see even different risks. The next stakeholder is domain experts. We can conduct an interview with domain experts and users to better understand the environment for the project. Likewise, we can have other stakeholders such as developers, architects, operations engineers, product owners, local support offices, and service desk technicians to determine areas of technical risk impacting the product and project. Now we will see a few approaches to identify risk. The approaches could be independent assessments. We can hire an independent assessor to evaluate the work products. They can conduct independent assessments to help evaluate and identify potential risks. The next approach is workshops and brainstorming sessions. We can conduct risk workshops and brainstorming sessions to gather input from the users or potential users. The next approach is risk templates. We can use risk templates to help record the risks that we can uncover. The next approach is use of the checklist. We can use testing checklists that have proven useful in the past projects that were similar in some manner to the project being evaluated. With this, we covered a few approaches which can be used to identify defects. Let's now see a few examples of the risk identification process. The first risk is performance risk, such as inability to achieve response times under high load conditions. The second risk is security risks, such as disclosure of sensitive data through security attacks. The third risk is reliability risks, such as application unable to meet availability specified in the service level agreement. We will now summarize all the important points which we covered until now. Risk identification is defined as the process of finding, recognizing, and describing risks. We want to identify risks so we can call them out, review them, prioritize them, and determine what to do with them. To identify the risks effectively, we can include a broad set of stakeholders and apply different approaches. Different stakeholders include technical test analyst itself, technical support team, domain experts, and different approaches could be independent assessments, workshops and brainstorming sessions, risk templates, use of checklist. Examples for risks are performance risk, such as inability to achieve response times under high load conditions. The second risk is security risks, such as disclosure of sensitive data through security attacks. The third risk is reliability risks, 
such as application unable to meet availability specified in the service level agreement. In this lecture, we will cover risk assessment. The learning objective here is to summarize the activities of the technical test analyst within a risk-based approach for testing activities, which is marked SK2. In the previous lecture, we saw the three main tasks of the technical test analyst, which are risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation. Out of the three tasks, we will now cover the second task. Risk assessment is defined as the process to examine identified risks and determine the risk level. Let's understand this in more detail. While risk identification is about identifying as many pertinent risks as possible, Risk assessment is the study of those identified risks to categorize each risk and determine the likelihood and impact associated with it. Here, the two terms are important, likelihood of risk and impact of risk. We should know more about it to understand risk assessment. Let's first understand the likelihood concept. Risk likelihood means the probability that a risk will become an actual outcome or event. The likelihood can be very difficult to assess. You have to consider if the issue could be detected in the test environment or it would be detected in the production environment. Because some risks are only evident in one of the environments, Let's understand this with the help of an example. A problem with network latency might exist in the test environment, but not in the production environment, because the network is configured differently in the production environment. Therefore, it's important to differentiate between risks that will occur in both environments and risks that will happen in only one. After identifying where the issue can occur, we have to do an impact analysis. For example, if a problem is a risk only in the test environment, how important is it? If it could stop all testing, then it's a very important risk and has a huge impact on testing activity. Let's take one more example. Suppose the display is not clear in the test environment, but it's clear in the production environment. In this case, the impact of the problem is less. This is the reason while accessing the risk, we need to consider both the likelihood and impact of risk. Let's see one more important point. Likelihood of occurrence of the issue is assessed by technical analyst whereas the impact of the issue is assessed by a test analyst. With this, we covered the definition of risk assessment and the concept of likelihood and impact analysis. We will now cover some of the project risks that can impact the success of the project. The first such risk is conflict between stakeholders regarding technical requirements. Sometimes, the same requirement can be perceived differently by the stakeholders. Such conflicts can result in product risk. The second project risk is communication problems resulting from the geographical distribution of the development organization. If your organization or team lacks proper channels of communication, this could also lead to defects. The third project risk is tools and technology. If you are working with a technology that you don't know enough about, 
then this can also result in a defect. The fourth project risk is time, resource, and management pressure. If you are working in an environment where you are given very little time to complete your tasks, then you may overlook certain things that may cause a defect. The fifth project risk is lack of earlier quality assurance. After each stage in the development phase, we must perform a review activity. If we miss performing review in the early development cycle, it may result in fault multiplication. The sixth project risk is high change rates of technical requirements. If the technical requirement changes at a high rate, it may result in confusion, and the stability of the feature will take some time. We will now cover some of the product risks that can impact the success of the project. The first such risk is complexity of the technology. Do not get confused with project risk. During the project risk, we concentrate on the skill of the people to deal with the new technology. Whereas in the product risk, we focus on the technology of the product. The second product risk is complexity of code structure. This means even if you are an experienced, skilled person, if the code is complex, then you might end up making an error. The third product risk is Amount of reuse compared to new code. Let's understand this. If the component is already available from the previous project, it would have gone through all the testing phase, and right now in the stable stage. If we reuse this component, we reduce the risk. Whereas, if we implement the new code, the associated risk is more. The fourth product risk is a large number of defects found relating to technical quality characteristics. Let's understand this point. If there are a large number of bugs in the software, there is a high chance that some of the bugs may get masked, which is a risk. The fifth risk is technical interface and integration issues. Let's understand this point. While estimating risk, we have to consider different interfaces, such as internal and external interfaces. For example, online banking. The secure external interface here is the must and should be considered as a security risk. Let's now summarize the points. Risk assessment is defined as the process to examine identified risks and determine the risk level. Then we covered a few of the project risks. The conflict between stakeholders regarding technical requirements. Communication problems resulting from the geographical distribution of the development organization. Tools and technology, including relevant skills time, resource, and management pressure, lack of earlier quality assurance, high change rates of technical requirements, and at the end, we covered a few of the product risks, complexity of technology, the complexity of code structure, the amount of reuse compared to new code, a large number of defects found relating to technical quality characteristics, technical interface and integration issues. In this lecture, we will cover 
Risk mitigation. Having identified and assessed risks, we now must mitigate them, which is the third activity in a risk based testing approach. As per ISTQB, risk mitigation is defined as the process through which decisions are reached and protective measures are implemented for reducing or maintaining risks to specified levels. What you need to understand here is, it's not possible to eliminate the risk, but we can reduce it by implementing protective measures. The fundamental mitigation activity falls into two broad categories. Firstly, by implementing the risk mitigation strategy, or evaluating risks continuously based on additional information gathered as the project unfolds. Let's see these categories one by one. The first category is implementing the risk mitigation strategy. Mitigation strategies are stated in the test plan. For example, if your safety or security related requirements in your project. Failing to fulfill such a requirement could be considered as a risk. And to reduce the risk, the risk mitigation task may involve a wide range of activities such as performing analysis, creating test automation scripts, and designing specific tests. These tasks are all carried out according to the priorities stated in the test plan by the test manager. But what you have to understand here is, all the risks cannot be identified during the planning stage. Therefore, we need to reassess the technical risk. That is what we are going to see now. The second approach is to evaluate risks continuously based on additional information gathered as the project unfolds. Let's understand this point. Monitoring and reassessing technical risks is achieved by reassessing known risk and identifying new risk as the project progresses. We can reassess the known risk by executing performance tests, analyzing the results and then implementing corrective measures. Similarly, we must be aware of new risks that commonly arise as the project unfolds. This may be the result of new requirements or change to the existing requirement. Now the question is, why do we do risk mitigation activity? We implement mitigation measures to decrease the likelihood or to avoid the impact of those risks. Let's summarize the important points. Risk mitigation is the process through which decisions are reached and protective measures are implemented for reducing or maintaining risks to specified levels. Two approaches to risk mitigation are implementing the risk mitigation strategy or evaluating risks continuously based on additional information gathered as the project unfolds. We implement mitigation measures to decrease the likelihood or to avoid the impact of those risks. Now, we will revise all the points which we covered in Chapter 1. In the introduction lecture, we saw the task of test manager is to establish and manage a risk-based test strategy. The technical test analyst identifies the technical product risk inherent in the project. A test analyst identifies business domain risks inherent in the project. The three main tasks of the technical test analyst are risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation. 
The next topic we covered was risk identification. Risk identification is defined as the process of finding, recognizing, and describing risks. We want to identify risks so we can call them out, review them, prioritize them, and determine what to do with them. To identify the risks effectively, we can include a broad set of stakeholders and apply different approaches. Different stakeholders include technical test analyst itself, technical support team, domain experts, and different approaches could be independent assessments, workshops and brainstorming sessions, risk templates, use of checklist. Examples for risks are performance risk, such as inability to achieve response times under high load conditions, security risks, such as disclosure of sensitive data through security attacks, reliability risks, such as application unable to meet availability specified in the service level agreement. After risk identification, we covered risk assessment. Risk assessment is defined as the process to examine identified risks and determine the risk level. Then we covered a few of the project risks. The conflict between stakeholders regarding technical requirements, communication problems resulting from the geographical distribution of the development organization, tools and technology, including relevant skills, time, resource, and management pressure, lack of earlier quality assurance, high change rates of technical requirements. At the end, we covered a few of the product risks. Complexity of technology, the complexity of code structure, amount of reuse compared to new code, a large number of defects found relating to technical quality characteristics technical interface and integration issues. At the end, we covered risk mitigation. Risk mitigation is the process through which decisions are reached and protective measures are implemented for reducing or maintaining risks to specified levels. Two approaches to risk mitigation are implementing the risk mitigation strategy or evaluating risks continuously based on additional information gathered as the project unfolds. We implement mitigation measures to decrease the likelihood or to avoid the impact of those risks.